Okay, so uh, here I have two ESP A266s. Uh, they're both already programmed with almost identical programs. Just one's the example that I'm going to show you the code for that will ping my computer locally. The other one already has uh, keys and stuff on it uh, to connect to my Filmstar Chris server. So I don't want to show you that code because there's private information on there. Uh, but let me go ahead and show you this one. Uh, so let me switch over here to uh, to the computer. Or actually, I'll just yeah, let's do let's do this. Um, okay. Right here, if you can read that. No, let me let me sit right here while I just switch over to the view on the computer here. Okay, so here I have uh, BusyBox running HTTP, or well, I'm about to start running it, HTTPD, so it's just a web server. It can be running any web server, but I'm just using this as an example. I'm gonna be running on port 9999 so that that's just a port I'm not using right now because it's just an example. Then I do dash VV for verbose so we can get the output of the screen. F forces it into the foreground to so the background because right now I'm just showing this to you to um, show you how the, the signal comes in. So I'm gonna plug in uh, the example ESP8266 and it will take a second to connect to, my, oh, hold on, let me unplug that and actually start up the server, okay. Now I'm going to plug in the ESP8266. It should take a couple seconds to connect to my server, and then it's going to do an HTTP request to this computer. There we go. And these files actually don't exist. It's just an example. That's how we get the 411. But you notice it ran the one URL uh, immediately, then it waited five seconds, and then every second after that, it's going to ping the second URL. Okay, so it pings the first URL, the second it boots up, waits a certain amount of time, a longer amount of time. Uh, pings the URL and then for every second after that it loops uh, and as you'll see as we get further into this little uh, test you'll see how uh, what I'm using this for so let's see so again that's the code here on this ESP8266 chip uh, which is the example code and again this is identical code just with different URLs and security keys on there and plus with the uh, uh, I'm going to show you the code here that I used and um, yeah, so let's go ahead and look over here at the Arduino code for the ESPA266. Okay, so here is the code, and it's basically the uh, basic example for HTTP request, a client, a HTTP client, web client, for the ESPA266 when you install uh, the ESPA266 modules for your Arduino interface. This is the example with a few changes. Um, so let's look over it. Uh, you're including some header files here for the ESP8266 and Arduino or defining serial so we can troubleshoot it through uh, serial connection. Then we're going to enable the uh, ESP8266 Wi-Fi multi. That's just uh, in the default example. This allows you to specify multiple access points. So I I'm only using one, but you can make a list of them and it will check for each one and connect to whichever one it finds first. Um, here you would define, you type in the name of your access point, the name of your wireless router, and then the password for your wireless router there. Uh, then here you would put the URLs for the two different uh, URLs that you want to hit up. And then here are your delays. Uh, so we got a delay of one second, which really never gets used because it gets overwritten by D2 and D3. Uh, this one is 300,000 milliseconds, so that is our five minutes. This one is one minute. And then we're saying number connection number zero, and I'll explain that in a moment. Next, our setup, basically we're setting up mostly serial port stuff here, all serial port stuff here, so that again, you can troubleshoot. If it's not connecting to your Wi-Fi, you can see what's going on through USB, uh, serial connection. Uh, and then here, it's gonna to output to the serial display. It's gonna tell you it's waiting to connect, it's trying to you know, it's connect, trying to connect, trying to connect. And then uh, it's delaying one second, it's gonna print a little dot each time. And here is where it's going to try to access to your access point with its password that we defined up above. Very basic stuff that if you work with the ESP8266 at all, you've done that. It's in basically every example in some form or another. Then we've got our main loop here, okay? So what main loop's gonna do is it's going to loop and it's gonna to try to connect, it's gonna check, are we connected? If we are connected, it's gonna do something. If we are not connected, Oh, see, I really I should have changed this to D. Doesn't really matter. Uh, if we are not connected, 
it's going to wait one second, which again, I, I set a variable for that up here and I should change this. Let's do it now. D, there we go. Okay, so it checks. If you're not connected, it waits one second and checks again. It does that over and over again until it shows that you're connected to some wireless access point. Then we're enabling HTTP client and calling it HTTP. We're printing something to the serial port, letting you know that it's trying to connect to a web server. Then we're gonna check, is the connection equal to zero, which it is the first time around, right here. Uh, and then, if it is, well, we're gonna add one to itself, so it's gonna be something higher than zero. So next time around, it won't run this function anymore, or this option here, it will run this. And so, again, if it's the first time that it's connected, uh, this round, it will try an HTTP request and change your delay to delay one, which in this case was the five minutes. Then it's going to print output to serial port. It's going to get your HTTP code, whether it was successful, 404, uh, you know, 404 not found. Uh, if the code is greater than zero, well, then we're gonna print that to the serial port. And if the HTTP code is okay, we're gonna grab the string and print that to serial port. So actually, like half our code here is just troubleshooting for, you know, sending stuff to the serial uh, connection, which again is in the default code. I, if I wrote this from scratch, I probably wouldn't put all that in there, but it's from the default code. So I just left it in there. It's a good way to troubleshoot. But for the actual functionality of this, we can get rid of half, you know, all the serial code stuff, serial port stuff. Anyway, and then we'll end, and then we'll delay D, which D will change to either D1 or D2. So what does this mean? Again, let me explain what's happening here. The ESP8266, this one or this one, turns on, tries to connect to a wireless access point. Keeps checking, am I connected, am I connected? Once it's connected, it's gonna continue uh, with its, its loop. And if it's the first time that it's gone through this loop, successfully connected to Wi-Fi, it's going to connect to one URL. Then it's gonna change its delay from one second to five minutes in this case. And from there, it is going to then do a separate second HTTP request. And it's going to do that request. And then it's gonna change the delay from five minutes to one minute. And it's gonna to continue to loop doing that second URL one minute at a time. So let's real quick look over the code real briefly again. We got our include, our headers, setting up serial port, connecting or setting up so we can connect to Wi-Fi, setting our uh, AP, our access point, and its password, what URLs we wanna to, to connect to, and then our delays. The initial delay is one second. Once it successfully connects to the first URL, it's going to set the delay to five minutes, which is the 300,000 milliseconds. Then it's going to continue uh, a loop a second time, and this time it's going to reset the delay to one minute. And so the first time around, it's gonna do this. Every time after the first connection, it's going to do this second URL, which again, you wanna replace these with the URLs you wanna to connect to. A lot of serial port stuff, actually connecting to the access point, and this is the loop that here it checks. Is this the first time we're connecting? If so, add one to it so that we know that we've already connected once and do that first URL, change your delay, Second time around, which would be five minutes later, you know, connect to the second URL and then reset your delay to one minute. And it's just gonna keep looping like that over and over again. And the rest of the magic is done on the server side. It just, if those connections are successful to those URLs, the script on the other side. So it does, actually doesn't submit any information to the URLs. In this case, you could make it do something. Uh, but right, right, really what I'm looking for is a timestamp that is logged when a URL is hit which I'm dumping to a file. And then also if the second URL is hit, log that as well, but also send a text message. So let me show you why I created this. Okay, so let me show you what this project is for. I'm gonna take the ESP that we just programmed and we're gonna go outside. So come with me. <laughs> okay. Kids working on school. Say hi, Amber. Hi. <laughs> okay. So, I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna put the ESP down in my garage real quick. So this is something 
uh, that I'm going to work on today, but let me explain the issue and the solution and why I'm doing this today, okay? So, I live out in the sticks, so I have well water. So, uh, this is my aerator tank. So let me explain the situation. So all the way over here, I'm going to go this way. I have an in-ground pump. So that goes down into my well. And it goes through that pipe under the ground all the way back over here to where my aerator is. Now, I just realized I forgot my little camera stand. So it comes up through this pipe and goes up into the tank here. Okay? So actually, I take that back. It actually comes in through this little tube into that pipe. Anyway, let me explain this to you why I'm doing this. Let me let me get my camera stand while I'm talking to you about this. So two or three months ago, I had no water and I've fixed this thing a number of times myself, but uh, what I thought I had was a bad well pump. Actually, as I'm walking by in the garage here, here is my old well pump, okay? If you look at it right here, oh, this thing's heavy. There's a big crack on it. So what happened was I had a bladder valve, which I'll show you in a minute. I just want to get my camera stand so I don't have to hold this the entire time. Let's see. Okay, got the camera stand. Now let's go. <laughs> okay, so I just wasted your time for two minutes. Okay, so a little, a little wooden camera, actually phone stand that I made just out of a piece of wood, but it will help me uh, prop this phone up. So if you guys aren't familiar with well systems, which living out here for seven years, fixing it all the time, you learn a lot. So. I guess I'll use the camera stand since I brought it out. Uh, maybe I'll hold it for this part. Okay, so anyway, water comes from the pump over there, the ground, underground, into this tank. Sprays it. Let me take the lid off of this so I can show you. Whoa. So, in here, we have these little sprinkler heads that spray down into here and fill this up when the water gets low. The way that's controlled is by a little dip switch in here. It's a, this right here. So if you can see that. When it's tilted up, it turns the pump off. When it's tilted down, it turns it on. I'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, over here, I, I promise there's a, the ESP is gonna come into to play here in a moment. We have uh, this bladder valve. So in here, there's a bunch of air at the top and a valve at a, like a, a bladder that moves up and down so that the pump doesn't have to run all the time. This pressurizes the house while the pump in here, there's a pump inside this tank as well. As well. And the well. Okay. Put this down here and line you up. Okay. So here's the issue. I used to have a bladder valve over here, which was not necessary. All that supplied was the hose spigot over by the pump there. Uh, really, the people, normally you have a bladder valve before the tank to power sprinklers. I don't have sprinklers. What happened was that bladder valve went bad. The, the, the bladder in it got a hole and the whole thing filled with water. So what that caused was for my pump underground to run constantly, which can burn up the motor itself, the pump. Uh, but in my case, I don't even know if the pump still works. It wiggled off the 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 screws, the threads, fell and cracked the threads. That's what that, uh, that crack was we just looked at. Needless to say, that's expensive. Those pumps are easily $700, if not more, plus paying someone to come and fix it. So at the time, I was like, okay, how can I prevent this? So this right here uh, is a pressure gauge. When the pressure is low, it would turn on the pump when the pressure was high, it would turn it off again. And it would fill that bladder valve. Now, since we removed the bladder valve, because that would have been an extra $200 that I didn't need, uh, what we ended up doing was uh, using the dip switch, which used to control 
this little uh, valve here, which would allow the water in because the bladder valve would have pressure. So we got rid of this, which is nice because these die every year or two and they're like 12 bucks, but it's a pain in the butt when they die if you don't have one on hand. So now when that float inside this tank gets low, what it's going to do is turn on the pump directly so there's no bladder valve. So last time, uh, the, since the bladder valve went bad, it ran all the time and fell off. Well, this morning, my wife woke me up because it was running and running and running. Seems like our little float valve is going bad. Uh, I couldn't get it turned off. I shook it a whole bunch. You can hear the little uh, switch inside there rattle around, and it started working again. But I assume it's not going to last much longer. So I ordered a new one off of Amazon. It was going to take two or three days to get here. Uh, hopefully for now, it's, it's going to work, though. But we don't want that pump running because if it runs until it burns out or falls off again, again, that's close to $1,000 to replace. So last time this happened with the bladder valve problem, I decided to that I was going to hook up an ESP that will alert me when it's been running for more than five minutes. And that's exactly what I just did. So in the example, I shortened the time, but in the final example, it I, I created the ESP. I programmed it so it hooks to my Wi-Fi, which hopefully I get a signal out here. I should. Um, sends a signal to a log so that way I can track when this pump is turning on and off. I can see how often it does it. But if it runs for more than five minutes, because it shouldn't run for more than a minute, maybe two, I, I haven't actually timed it, but it's not very long, just to fill up the top of this tank again. Uh, if it runs for longer than that, it hits another URL, which is going to send me a text message. So now I just have to wire the ESP8266 into this little junction box here, which used to be a pressure switch, still technically is, but isn't actually measuring any pressure. So let's go ahead and uh, unplug it so I don't electrocute myself. And again, if I haven't already said, uh, don't try this at home. I'm not a professional when it comes to high voltage and whenever you mess with high voltage, make sure you know what you're doing uh, so you don't electrocute yourself. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna unplug the pump and going to unscrew little top here okay before with the Sun behind me I was probably a silhouette but here we go we got this I'm gonna lift this off and we got three wires here and all uh, wire nutted off and they're hooked to the tank so I need to figure out which two of these uh, sends out the power which should be about 240 volts uh, when when the pump is on once I determine that, I can hook the ESP8266 up in it. I know ESP8266 doesn't run at 240 volts. I've got a solution for that. So come with me. And uh, actually, I left that solution inside, I think. Or is it in my garage? Where did I leave that? Okay. Oh, here it is right here. So I have this. Let's turn on the light so you can see it. So what this does, or it's supposed to do, is take that high voltage and convert it down to 5 volts. Uh, this was a couple of dollars. I hope that it works and doesn't burn down my house. So uh, again, I left my camera stand outside. But uh, what I need to do is I need to solder this to the ESP8266 and then I need to connect the other side to the high voltage so while I am testing things outside, let me plug in my soldering iron. Oh my, love, love my, my workbench here. It's great, isn't it? Okay, plug that in so that can start heating up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this multimeter and go check the power outside. So let's go do that. Hmm. These streams are fun. I prefer to edit this stuff, uh, and so I don't bore you. But I thought this would be a good thing, time killer, since we're trying to go all day streaming here. Again, we're gonna check. It is currently unplugged. The wire's over there. Okay, let me grab my little camera stand here. Line this camera up. Okay, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set my multimeter, uh, mine to 500 there, because again, that should be over 200 volts. And I'm just going to kind of guess. I'll try this one. And 
this one. If I can get that up in there. Okay, that should be good enough. So I'm going to plug it in. Okay, it's plugged in. And I'm actually getting 400 volts, so I don't... That's not the right one. So let's unplug that. That's not... Okay, let's try... This one and this one. And plug it in again, because I shouldn't see any voltage till I flip that dip switch. Okay, so we're not getting any voltage right now. You know, so let me go ahead and push this dip switch down. Let's see. It should have turned on the second I pushed down, I had to shake it, and that's the problem. So here, now you're seeing 400. That doesn't sound right, it should be two something. That's odd. But I'm getting a voltage reading. So those are the two wires I need to hook up. I don't know why it's giving out that much voltage though. Okay. Let's go ahead and unplug that. Let me see something. Let me get another multimeter. I do have another one. I'm pretty sure I had the settings right on that. I only have one of these power converters, so I want to make sure Try this little cheapo one, see if I get the same little reading on there. Because we should be seeing something over 200. Not in the almost 500 range. Which maybe I'm finding more of a problem. Can this adjust to the brightness? Let me go like this. Well, I'm a little washed out right now. Oh, and it's getting worse. Uh, okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and it's unplugged again, right there, so let me unhook that one, unhook that one, and I think that's in there good. Let me turn on the multimeter. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what's different on the other multimeter, but I am getting 240 some odd volts right here. So, I should mark those so that I hook up the right ones. Or just remember, because it's. I'm going to do it in a moment. I'll leave those in there. I will unplug it again. And uh, let's go solder. The solder and iron should be heated up by now. I wish my camera would adjust to the lighting properly. Okay. And again, I forgot my camera stand. <laughs> Let's see. Sorry for the lighting issue. Okay, got my ESP A266. Some space here. Okay, got this here. Let me go wet my little sponge. I'll be back in a moment.
Okay, I'm back. Thank you for being patient. So again, this whole thing is just an alert system. It will log when that pump goes on and off and alert me if it runs for more than five minutes. Uh, here's the ESP8266. Now I just have to remember, oh, it's behind the camera, right here. So the red side should take in the higher voltage and then the output should come to here, which I should be able to solder to the uh, ground and five volt down here at the end of the ESP8266. So, I'm gonna solder this here. The other side I'm gonna wire nut onto, I have some wire here to extend it so it's not just hanging right off the, uh, the wire there. It will be out of the way. And where are my helping hands? Right here. Okay. Again, I hope this isn't boring you guys too much trying to do this streaming thing unedited. What I'm going to do is try to get the solder. Make sure I got the right. Yep. Now, I'm a horrible solderer, so we'll see how long this takes for me to get right. Well, there we go. We got some solder on there. And a little more on there. And this should go. Make sure 5 volts the first one. Yep. So. There's one. Whoops. And my helping hand just fell off its little arm. Slide that back on. Ooh, hot soldering iron. Let's put the soldering iron down so I don't burn myself anymore. There we go. And black wire here. Okay, we're gonna unplug the soldering iron. That was simple enough. Now, let's see, right here, where's my camera, it's on this side, okay, right there, not beautiful, but functional, okay, now, again, I'm going to take this little wire and extend what's on here, so I'm going to cut this, strip this, Strip it a little bit more than that. There we go. Well, oh, that's too long. Let's cut some of that off. Okay. Now, I need to strip this a little bit. We're coming off the device. So, I'm going to go probably this one here. Just to give a little bit more for the wire nut to grab onto. I actually, how did I think about it? It's too late because I already soldered it onto here. I should have hooked this up and made sure it's really putting out five volts so that it doesn't just fry this ESP8266. If it does, I'm done with this project for now and I'm out a $3 board. So let me get some wire nuts, which should be somewhere over here. Ah, here we go. Okay, and where, oh, there's the wire. I'm like, where did the wire I just stripped go? Okay, so I'm going to twist this on here. And twist it on with the wire knot. There we go. And other side. Again, I am not an electrician. Don't do this at home. 
I just don't. I'd much rather have this hooked up. Okay. And not, hopefully not lose another thousand dollar pump. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Now again, uh, right now I'm just gonna hook this up and then probably off camera I'm going to uh, put this inside some sort of container, probably some Tupperware container or something, hot glue it all so that it's not exposed to the weather. Uh, but for right now it's a sunny day, there shouldn't be any raining. And I just wanna get hooked up because I've been meaning to do this for months and after today's morning little fiasco of uh, our pump having problems, I just wanna get this done. So let's go do this. I stripped the other end there. Oh, I only stripped one of the two on the other end. Okay, hold on. Okay, let me bring my camera stand. Let's get going. Let's see, is it going to adjust when I walk out into the light here? Uh, not really. Okay, want to be like that. I'll just be a white glow. <laughs> Man, that's bad. Okay, it's still unplugged right, right here, so we know that we're good. Looking at this one and that one, and this side doesn't matter whether I hook it up to positive or negative. So I will just take out that. Screw that back on. Little tug, it seems secure. Pull out this other side. Take the wire nut off. Mm -hmm. That's loose. Let's put it back in a little better. Let's see if I can get this on here. Okay, that seems a little more secure. Now, for the moment of truth, I should be able to plug this in and check my server and see if it gets a signal. Maybe I'll see here a pop and my ESP will be fried. But we're gonna plug this in. The water turned on. I didn't have any uh, lights on my ESP8266 uh, program to go on. I should have set it to light up when it sends a signal. I suppose I could hook up the multimeter now and see if I'm getting voltage through there. There was a blue light, and I am getting voltage. Is the blue light just coming on when I touch the multimeter to it, though? Oh, and it's off. And I'm not getting any voltage now. So, the best thing for me to do now is go inside and check if I am getting a signal to my service, because hopefully, again, I don't even know if I'm getting a Wi-Fi signal out here. I know I do in my backyard, but there's a few more walls between 
here. My backyard's just going out the back door. It's line of sight almost from my router. Let's go ahead and check this out. And going inside, I'll be able to reset my camera as well. Okay, let's see. Hey, sweetie. And now it's super dark because the camera's not adjusting. Okay. I'll put this right here and switch back over to the computer. Okay, so um, uh, I have a command that's going to pull the last log and tell me how long since the last time the pump ran. So pump. Pump was on two minutes, 23 seconds ago. So I think we were successful. Awesome. So let's see. Oh, look. You know, restarting the camera got it to uh, fix its exposure. Oh, so I hope that you understood what I was doing. So again, uh, all that, that, that ESP is doing is when it's powered on, it connects to my local Wi-Fi. And immediately, once it's connected, which should take a couple of seconds, it will request, do an HTTP request to my Filmstar Chris server in this example, uh, in this case with a security key and through uh, HTTPS. And all this is, is if, if the request is successful, the server logs to a file, a timestamp. Then it waits uh, for five minutes. If the power is still on in five minutes, it does a, a HTTP request to a separate second URL on the same server, and it will send me an alert uh, through a text message. Uh, so uh, someone's probably going to ask, how do you get uh, the ESPA266 to send a text message? It doesn't. It's doing HTTP request, and my web server is sending a text message basically through email, because you can email text messages, which is something uh, I've mentioned before. Just Google it, or I'll probably, maybe I'll talk about it later today. Um, but uh, you can basically send an email to any uh, cell phone that you know the phone number and the provider. You send it to an email address based on that, and it comes through as a text. So that's what my server does. And it takes uh, five to 10 seconds usually for a text to come through that way. Um, but if the pump, if the power's on for five minutes or more, I'm gonna get one of those, and then it's going to continue looping. And in this case, every minute after that, it's going to send an alert letting me know that pump is running. It's still running, it's still running. If it never reaches the five minute mark, which it shouldn't, uh, all I have is a log, but I'm collecting the log so I know how often it turns on and off because I am kind of curious and you know, data is knowledge and knowledge is power. So the more I know about how that turns on and off, when it turns on and off, I can do you know diagrams and charts and I can just learn a little bit more about uh, how often that pump runs and how much often turns on and off when I'm home, when I'm not home. Is it turning on when no one's home? Because it shouldn't. If, if no one's home uh, and the pump starts running, uh, there's probably a water leak somewhere. So that's good to know. Um, so yeah. So I hope that was, I, I know, again, the camera angles aren't the best in this example. I prefer editing and stuff like that. But again, for a stream like this, I thought that that would be a good thing to go over. Something I've been planning to do for a while. I'm glad I finally sat down and did. I do a stuff to go out there later on and enclose uh, that, weatherproof it, which I'm just for now probably just, again, going to cut a hole in a Tupperware container, put it in there, tape it shut, and uh, super or glue gun around the wires and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so that's what uh, I have set up. So let's see, what are we going to work on now?